All right, we're still working in intermediate algebra. This is section 4.5, solving rational equations and literal equations. Uh, this is part two of this video. Um, the word problems start on page 163, and here I just have a picture of the first word problem from your book. It says, um, example six, it takes Alan three hours to wax the first floor of building one. It takes Frank six hours to wax the same floor. How long will it take if Alan and Frank work together? Okay, so this is not as complicated as it sounds. We're going to first write an equation. Um, if Alan and Frank are working together, the basic uh, form of our equation is going to be Alan's time plus Frank's time equals a total time. All right, well, I don't know what these times are. So I do know it takes Alan three hours to wax the floor. So how much can Alan do in one hour? If it takes him three hours to do the whole floor, he can do one third in one hour. Um, it takes Frank six hours to do the whole floor, so he can do one sixth in one hour. We don't know what that total time will be, but it will be one hour out of the total. And that's the variable, T. We don't know what the total time is. That's what we're trying to find out. So this is your equation. However long it takes Alan to do the whole thing, one out of it will be one hour. Same thing with Frank. One hour his, out of his total time will be one hour out of the total time. And this is a rational equation. So we want the common denominator, the least common multiple for 3 and 6 is 6. But we're going to also need that t on there. So we're going to multiply times 6t. We're going to use 6t over 1. And this is distribute, so top times top bottom times bottom. That will give us 6t over 3 plus 6t over 6 equals 6t over t. And now we're going to reduce. This becomes 2t plus 1t equals 6 because those t's are gone. Now just combine like terms and isolate t. That's going to give you t equals 2. And of course, because it's a word problem, let's go back and look at it again. The question says, how long will it take if Alan and Frank work together? We'll answer this in a complete sentence. It will take two hours if they work together. Okay, for example seven, we have the word problem here. Lisa estimates that it may take her 12 months to work on an algebra book. Megan estimates that it will take her 10, 18 months to work on a similar algebra book. They realize that it may take them fewer months if they work together. Were they right? How long will it take if they work together? All of these kinds of work problems are going to be written the same way. We're going to do Lisa's time plus Megan's time will equal their total time. I don't know what Lisa's time is, but I know that it takes her 12 months to do the entire book. She can do 1 12th in one month. Megan takes 18 months to do the entire book, so she can do 1 18th and that will be one out of their total time. So same method here, same type of equation. First looking for the common denominator for 12 and 18 is 36, and we'll need to put a t on there. Since there's a t here, so we'll end up with 36t as a common denominator. We're going to multiply times 36t over 1. And that's just distribute. So we're going to have 36t over 12 plus 36t over 18 equals 36t over t. And then reducing, 36 divided by 12 is 3. So we're going to have 3t plus 2t equals, those t's reduce. 36. 
um, to finish this up, combine like terms and isolate your t. So this becomes 5t equals 36 divided by 5. So t equals 36 over 5. Um, the only problem with this type of answer, <laughs> 36 over 5, if this was a pure algebra question, we just need to make sure this is reduced, which it is. But this is a word problem. Um, the question asks us how long will it take if they work together. Um, I don't really know of anybody who would answer a, a, a question about time as 36 over 5. It will take them 36 over 5 months. That doesn't really make sense in conversation. So it does make sense to change this to either a fraction or a decimal. If you use your calculator to divide this out, um, it's approximately 7.2, which would be a more realistic way to answer this. So in a complete sentence, if they work together, uh, it will take about, and I'm using about because this is rounded, 7.2 months if they work together. All right, example eight is at the bottom of page 164. It says two Phi Theta Kappa advisors are traveling to a conference in Miami in two separate cars with four officers in each car. Advisor Lucas drives 10 miles per hour faster than advisor Chloe. When Lucas has traveled 120 miles, Chloe has traveled 100 miles. What is the rate is of each advisor? All right, so for this question, we're gonna first set up some um, equations for Chloe. Distance equals rate times time. That's the distance equation. For Lucas, the same thing. Distance equals rate times time. Uh, what do we know from the question? We know Chloe went 100 miles. It says when Lucas traveled 120, Chloe had traveled 100. So we're going to replace these with 100 and 120. Okay, we don't know anything about Chloe's rate, but we do know that Lucas's rate is 10 faster than Chloe. Okay, so R is going to stand for Chloe's rate. Lucas's is R plus 10. Uh, we also don't know anything about their times, but we are going to take these equations and isolate time because it looks like it says when Lucas has traveled 120 miles, Chloe has traveled 100 miles. It looks like we're talking about the same amount of time here. Lucas covered 120 miles in the same amount of time that Chloe covered 100. So we're going to isolate time on both of these equations and then we'll set time equal. So to isolate time here, we just divide off rate. So time for Chloe equals 100 over r. Uh, here we're going to divide by r plus 10. That isolates time. So time for Lucas will equal 120 over r plus 10. All right, the important thing here to remember is these times, Chloe's time and Lucas's time, are equal. So we can actually get rid of time and put these two expressions equal to each other. So I'm going to scroll up here. And I'm going to put 100 over r is equal to 120 over r plus 10. Because these times are equal, this time is equal to this time. This is substitution. If you remember that back from uh, chapter 2, I can say that these are also equal. Now, here I have a rational equation that is actually a proportion. Equation, uh, fraction equal to another fraction. And I can use that law of proportions to do the cross products, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. So what I know here is that 120 times R is equal to 100 times R plus 10. And you're going to want the parentheses there. Now I have an equation that I can solve for R. Um, and R is Chloe's rate. So we're going to solve this here. We've got 120R 
equals, this is just distribute that 100, 100 R plus 1000. Combine like terms, we want to subtract this 100 R, so that's going to leave us with 20 R here equals, ooh, I have too many zeros. This is supposed to be 1000. All right, so this is 1,000 like it's supposed to be now, okay? 100 times 10 is 1,000. I accidentally wrote too many zeros there. So once I distribute this 100, I have 100R plus 1,000. I subtract the 100R, I have 20R equals 1,000. Divide by 20, I get R equals 5. All right, R stands for Chloe's rate. So we know Chloe's rate is five miles per hour. What did the question ask us? Let's, okay, the question asks, what is the rate of each advisor? So we just found Chloe's rate. Chloe's rate is this five miles per hour and Lucas's rate was 10 more than Chloe's. So Chloe, Chloe's rate is five miles per hour. Lucas's rate is 15 miles per hour since Lucas was going 10 miles per hour faster than Chloe. Okay, we're gonna move on to some literal equations. Uh, this is example nine on the top of page 166. It says A equals B over C plus one. A literal equation is sometimes a formula or some equation that has multiple variables in it and we're being asked to isolate or solve for a specific variable. And the directions on this example say solve for C. So we need to isolate the C. That's all we're gonna do. Um, the A and the B aren't going to disappear. The A and the B will just be moved over to the other side with C isolated, preferably on the left, but not necessarily. So the first step is to clear the fractions. So the common denominator, this is the, actually the only denominator, C. So to clear the fractions, we multiply times C every term. So this will become AC. When we multiply times this term, we could actually use C over one, and it's gonna be then BC over C. When we multiply times this one, C times one is just C. And uh, reducing makes those C's disappear. So what we have is AC equals B plus C. Okay, not quite there yet because we're trying to solve for C, so we need all the terms that have C to be on the same side. So I'm gonna just gonna subtract this C term off and move it over to this side. Um, and that's going to give us AC minus C equals B. Now these are not like terms because like terms have to have the same exact variables. So that AC minus C is not going to be, get combined into the same term. They are not like terms. Uh, once you get all the terms that have your variable to the same side, that, that variable that we're trying to solve for, in this case it's C, is a GCF. So we're going to factor out the variable we're solving for as a GCF. And when I factor that out, um, factoring out a GCF is undoing distributive property. I end up with A minus one. You can check this by distributing C times A is AC. C times one is negative C. C times negative one gives negative C. I'm not doing anything with this B. Um, now that I have all the C's kind of collected into this one variable, and that was the whole point of doing this, was to collect the C's in one place. I can now divide off this A minus one on both sides, and it reduces out. And you have your C isolated. So we have C equals B over A minus one. Okay, for example 10, we have 1 over m plus 1 over n equals p. Similar um, 
to the last example, except this time we're solving for m. So looking at the denominators, we have an m and an n. The denominator here is not p because this would be p over 1. The denominator here is 1, so it doesn't really affect the GCF. The denominator, the common denominator is going to be m, n, or m times n. So we will multiply the entire equation times m, n, and you can use it over 1 if you want. This first term will be m, n over m. This next term, m, n over n. This last term will be m, n, p, in alphabetical order. So reducing here, these will reduce and these will reduce. So we end up with n plus m equals m n p. Great. We're trying to solve for m. So we need the terms that have m in them to be on the same side. So we're going to subtract this m off so we can come to this side over here, this right side, but they won't be like terms, just like the last example, since this one has different variables. So what's it going to look like? n equals m n p minus m, and of course, because I subtracted this, it's now a negative m. Um, we're almost there. We're getting there. We're trying to solve for m. So now I'm going to factor out the m to get it all collected in one place. Factor out the m. We're left with n p minus 1, and then it's collected all in one place. That's the point of factoring it out as a GCF to get all the m's in one place. Then you can isolate it by dividing. So we'll divide off the np minus 1 both sides. And that leaves us with m equals n over np minus 1. I hope that didn't confuse you because all I did was switch these two sides here and put the m over here and put this rational over here. So this is your final answer. All right, example 11 on the top of page 167 says f equals mv squared over r. I think this is a physics formula, actually. Um, we're supposed to be solving for r, so we need to isolate this r. Now again, we've done this a couple times in this section. This is a proportion. This doesn't look like a fraction, but you could put this as f over 1. If you have a fraction, equal to another fraction, you can simplify it really easy just by doing cross multiply. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this one here. And I know that f times r will equal 1 times mv squared, which is just mv squared. I'm trying to solve for r, so I need to isolate this r. This is a much simpler equation than the last two examples we did because there are no pluses and minuses. It's all multiplication and division, so much faster, much easier. To isolate this r, I just need to divide by f. And that will reduce, do the same thing on both sides. So I have r equals mv squared over f. And that will be your final answer. OK, example 12. This is the last example in this section. e equals k q over r squared. We're solving for k, so I need to isolate this k. Again, another proportion here. So we're going to do this the same way we did the last example. Um, if it helps you, think of this as e over 1. And then when you cross multiply like this, you'll have kq equals e r squared. Um, obviously, this 1 times kq is still kq e times r squared is e r squared. I'm trying to isolate k, so I need to divide off this q. And that gives us k equals e r squared over q. There's no factoring involved. If you're just working with uh, proportions, because it's all about multiply and divide, so you don't have to do any factoring on these, these last two examples. All right, that's it for 4.5. Um, bring your questions back to class. I'll see you there.